Hey coaches, uh, wanted to share with you some things that we do as far as practice efficiency and also uh, helping that improve your competitive cauldron or just seamlessly fit those two things together. We take a lot of pride in the way that we plan practice as far as the structure goes. Uh, obviously the objectives are contents and also the sequence. One thing that's really helped our program is assigning partners rather than spending the time breaking your whole team up into smaller groups. So uh, if we are doing anything in practice, our players are always gonna follow their partner. So what this means is when I'm planning practice, I'm gonna assign each coach a partner and he's gonna be with that partner the entire practice. So if, um, if we look at our practice plans here, um, as I plan practice, what I like to do as far as structure goes, I like to have the back of the practice uh, with all of our notes for the coaches or just our partners here. If we have to assign teams, we will do so here. Uh, and then also, I just have a list of all of my players. So if somebody's out, I can you could delete them for the day or you could just highlight him to where now we know we have 17 players at practice and how does that affect practice structure and so on. So let's pretend in this practice we had all 18 players practicing together. In this column here, we have an individual skill that they're going to work in their pre-practice routine. Players typically take ownership of this, but if we need a coach, uh, my assistant coaches will be floating around the gym, helping players come up with drills or just making sure that they're on task and, uh, and actually improving in the skill that we've identified for them. These could change on a daily basis or a weekly basis. Uh, just whenever you identify a skill for a player that they need to improve on, we put it in this pre-practice chart here. If we flip to the left column, uh, if we break up into three groups, these players would be with me, and then this would be group two, and so on. Uh, London and Daniel, Deuce and Patrick, and Peyton and Connor, each one of those are groups of two or partners. So London and Daniel will follow each other all throughout practice. So if I say three groups, these six are coming to my group, and these two players will work together. So Let's look at a specific practice and see how this um, works out. First, when planning practice, um, you could assign partners two ways. One, you could divide up your partners by role or position. So London and Daniel are gonna be like players. So they might be the same, they might both be guards or uh, they might both be forwards. That way, whenever I arrive at practice, and I see that I have a partner, we just have to be opposite jerseys of each other. So it doesn't matter if I'm in blue and, and my partner's in red or vice versa. As the coach, I know that teams are gonna be even because I assign partners based on skill level, talent level, and position. That way your players can, can be in different teams uh, day to day where you're not always doing your varsity versus JV. We like to split our guys 50-50. So if, if I come, if I'm Daniel and London's in orange for us, then Daniel's going to flip to a black jersey. Uh, so we just make sure that partners are opposite jerseys. Okay, so now let's look at a specific practice. If we're looking, let's get like a middle of the road, middle of the season practice here. Okay, so this would be the front of the practice plan. I like to do a two-column plan, so I will um, – fold my practice plan right down the middle. So fold the sheet of paper in half, that way it fits in my back pocket. And for the first hour or so of practice, I see all of this material. When I flip it over for the second half of practice, I see everything relevant for the second half. I think when things are all in one portrait column and you fold it in half, I know as a coach, I would forget to flip over and look at some of the details I might have on the right side of the paper. Uh, so this is a practice where it was practice 35, we're in December, we're going 3.15 to 5.05 p.m. So pre-practice skills, this is where players take ownership. This is the right column where they're going to get the specific skill we want them to work on. Um, as we move throughout practice, our partners will travel together. So if we look at uh, the practice film, 
of this practice. Let's see, we're looking for practice 35. So, um, and before we dive into this, I wanna talk about the competitive cauldron. So uh, if I'm dividing partners up evenly, then I know when we play one-on-one, -on -one, I'm going to get a true winner rather than, you know, your competitive cauldron can lose some validity if, you know, Johnny and Joe are matched up against each other. Uh, they just happen to find each other next in line, but Johnny's way better than Joe is. Well, that's going to, not going to give you an accurate representation of who your best players are based on one-on-one -on -one data. So um, what we do is you can weight categories for your competitive cauldron. For us, one-on-one is really important because we play in a drive and space system where we're creating small advantages off the bounce. Um, and the partners are always even for us. So I know when players are matched up one-on-one, -on -one, that's going to be super competitive. So let's put a lot of weight to that. Although we're a transition team, if we look at some small-sided games, uh, for instance, this one in transition, we're all in one group JV varsity. Now, orange and black teams are determined through partners. So I know that the orange team and the black team are both gonna be equal as far as talent level goes or a mix of JV and varsity guys. But sometimes you end up with a JV guy guarding a varsity guy because this is a four on two transition drill where we're running in two extra defenders. So I don't really know matchups here. So. Transition drills, although it's important to us, might not hold as much weight in our competitive cauldron formula because I can't determine matchups in these in these practices or in these drills during practice. So um, looking at a specific practice, as we go through our practice, we're always going to travel with our partner. So in this transition segment, uh, we all we already have our even teams. And then when we get to our individual skill, we're doing a lot of shooting in this segment here. Uh, so if we pull up the practice plan for shooting, let's go to, all right, so this will get us to shooting drills. What I want you to look at is let's look at these two players up here. This is number four and number 10. So they are partners and they're gonna follow each other in their shooting drills. So they're, they're partners, so they're shooting together. OK, later in practice, if we look back at the plan and we go to some one on one stuff at 405. So if I find that in the practice plan. Then let's see. OK, so now we're playing one on one. And this is number four and number 10 again. So now one on one, they're partners. So they're playing against each other one on one. Again, that holds high weight in our competitive cauldron. Um, when we play small sided games, they're going to be guarding each other. So this is also a great system for rotation, where if number 10 subs somebody out, let's go back here so we can get a visual of it. So number 10 is here on defense. He's on the black team. If he subs out number 11, then the player number four in orange is going to sub out number 11's partner. So we're always subbing in and out with our partner so as coaches we don't have to worry about subs and who's in who's out it's just when player 10 calls player 11 out player four calls his partner out so we're subbing as partners um, and then later if we go if we look at the five on five segment five on five is going to hold a lot of weight in ours because the game is played five on five but also five on five uh, we almost always play even teams so in this segment here, if we, let me find where uh, they're guarding, where both players are on. So let's st stick with number four, number 10. This is number four here. This is number 10 here. And our five on five stuff, they're now going to be guarding each other. So again, it's a way that you can spend less time dividing up teams. All you have to do is assign partners, okay? Um, I mentioned the two ways or, or one of the ways that we assign partners. So you could split it by role or position. That way, these two players that we've looked at today, they're similar position. They're both guards where I know the orange team's going to have a guard, the black team's going to have a guard. Doesn't matter. These two players could be flipped jerseys. It wouldn't matter to me. The other way to do it is um, let's say this player is uh, going to be guarding a really good shooter on Friday night. Uh, 
instead of talking to him about guarding a shooter or having to design practice drills where we're closing out on really good shooters, I'm just going to match him up with a really good shooter during practice on Wednesday and Thursday. So he's going to get two days of guarding a really good shooter. So Friday, it's just a carryover from practice instead of Friday really having to, to hammer home his closeouts and, um, you know, tagging shooters, all that stuff. So you can determine your, your partners by role or position, or if you want to go game plan, you can do it by matchup. We do a mix of both. Um, if you have any questions on practice design, uh, feel free to reach out to me at Coach Cassio on Twitter or markcassio at gmail.com. Hopefully this helps you uh, in, in efficiency and planning your practice. And also you can see how that can directly correlate uh, to improve your competitive cauldron as well.